Nerdiest Prime. Hi, and welcome to Nerdiest Prime, where we are reviewing every episode of Strange New World. We are in episode five. It's called Charades. We are joined this week by a special guest, uh, Carson Knox, who is a podcaster and uh, a reviewer, movie reviewer. Again, by Jenny Johnson, who is an Star Trek artist, and Alan, who is our nerdiest prime Trek Just expert. Fan. Just a fan. <laughs> so what did we think of this episode, Charades? And let's start with Jenny. I love this episode. I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was funny without being stupid. Um, I really enjoyed the deep dive into Spock. And I mean, we've done a lot of Spock, like we've done a lot of Spock over the years, but I appreciated the angle that they brought it in at. And I, yeah, like a, I, I like a caper, you know, so. <laughs> I actually surprisingly like this one. I thought it was gonna be kind of dumb, um, but you know we're in we're in like uh, peak sitcom territory here with with Star Trek. Like, I mean, we've done comedy in the past, um, but this was very like cliche ridden with with uh, with sitcom tropes. But uh, it it worked. Like, I had a good time. It was it was it was it made me laugh. Um, I, I was really wondering how they were going to explain that he has no pointed ears anymore. But, you know, I I bought the sci-fi gimmick for that, that they rebuilt him in interdimensional space or whatever. So, you know, it the, the Star Trek part worked for me. We had a good, we actually had a really good emotional payoff, too, at the end. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I actually had a surprisingly good time with this one. Oh, yeah. I, I thought it was a blast. Like, I, I had so much fun. But I got to say, as the special guest here, I, I should give my a little bit of my credentials as a Star Trek fan, right? I, I grew up with classic Trek, uh, you know, um, <laughs> you know, The Next Generation was my real show. I really love that. But I have long, for a long time, felt that Trek deserves to be on television, and I, I just find it as my comfort food, right? I'll I pretty much sit and watch almost anything. I did have some trouble with some of Discovery, but I'm just so thrilled to have regular Trek on television again that uh, it's just it's such a joy for me to watch all of these. And I've I've been watching your, you know, Nerdiest Prime reviews and I've been enjoying them so much, but you guys are are generally I think a lot more critical than I am. I'm just like, "Oh, I'm getting Trek every week. This is such a thrill. I'm so happy." So <laughs> And this one was the funniest episode that I have probably seen since, geez, I don't know. I mean, maybe the Next Generation episode where they all have that, they all get drunk. Um, I mean, this was so hilarious. I, I, I laughed a lot. I, uh, it, was, it gave me everything that I was hoping for. And it also, yeah, it, it gave me a little bit of the feels too because there was some serious subtext to it that I thought they did a great job delivering too. Yeah, I really I really like the episode as well. And I thought it was really funny. It was like basically the funniest episode of Star Trek I've ever seen. I was like laughing and then laughing and laughing and, and I was watching it uh late at night. I was trying not to wake up my wife. But that's never usually a problem when I'm watching Star Trek because I'm just gonna be quiet the whole time. But in this case I was like being pretty loud laughing. <laughs> uh and I think it's the funniest episode since uh, looking for Par Mark in all the wrong places from Deep Space Nine. <laughs> nice. yeah, that was pretty good. One. Um, it was very, you know, similar kind of hijinks. And speaking of hijinks, it kind of reminded me of the episode they did in the first season where they were talking about doing hijinks. And what is that? Was that the the Vulcan swap episode where they yeah, swapped around? Yeah, it's all, this is almost yeah. like a sequel to that. Yeah. Swap amok. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, right. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So let's I'll talk a little bit about the plot. I mean, the, the basic plot is that there's an accident and interdimensional beings uh, reconstruct uh, Spock and then they get the, the, the um, directions. No, the, you know, blueprints, not quite right. And they basically turn them into to a human. And then now he doesn't, he's completely human. He's kind of like a teenager. So how do we feel about that? I'm going to kind of go 
maybe like in reverse order and start with Karsten. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a delightfully Trekian uh, conundrum, right? Uh, having something incredibly transformative happen to a character we know so well in a certain way, and then having to deal with all the, you know, fallout from that, including, and I, I hear what Alan is saying about the sort of sitcom structure of it. It absolutely has that. But yeah, I mean, I, I just, I thought it was very well done. I enjoyed the way it was shot, how, you know, we see Spock in the 10 forward or mess hall or whatever it is called in, in uh, the Enterprise as the camera tracks from one character to another, all laughing about what's going on, you know, on this, on this joke and he's not getting it. And then we get pretty much the exact same track and in the next one when he's human and he's like laughing his ass off. I love that. Um, I love the scene where he's in the meeting with um, the Kirk brother and, uh, and you know, and he's, he's unable to deal with his anxiety and frustration over the fact that Kirk will not clean his plate. Uh, I love that. I thought that was so funny. Um, you know, and then the sort of the ritual that he has to go through with his... Um, his his fiance and her his monster in law you know all of that was was pretty amazing uh I, yeah i was really into it and then you know the fact that she is at the very end is like well you really should have told me and that's 100 percent legit you know complaint in all of it it revealed that spock doesn't trust his bride to be the way he should and he should have told her and i can understand why she's upset you know, um, all of that I thought was just you know bang on. Yeah, it was it was interesting because it was a like Jenny said we've done a lot of Spock over the years and it's hard to find you know fresh stuff to do with the character. But you know they did this and and Ethan Peck knocked it out of the park. Um, my my one logical gripe, <laughs> pardon the pun, um, is is uh, you know I wasn't quite understanding why his. His control, his emotional control would have been messed up from because I don't know if your if your mental disciplines would be associated with your DNA. But, you know, I was a little confused by that because I was like, wouldn't he just be like physio physiologically human, but still had those mental disciplines? Oh. But, I, you know, I that's, just let all that, that go. That's the thing that you're bumping on? <laughs> 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 so I think about these things now. Now that we're reviewing and critiquing things, I'm I'm thinking about things more than I used to. So, but uh, yeah, I almost expected a laugh track in this. It was like it was so sitcommy, but but I was like, I love like '90s, '80s sitcoms. So you know, I I, I always like the these these uh, cliches. It's like, oh, you know, the in laws are coming to dinner. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, and I hate them so much, and they always make me feel bad, and you know, and then hijinks ensue. So, uh, but yeah, and, and Anson Mount was great in this. Like the well, I should say the comedic timing of all the all the cast is so is so goodness, and the chemistry is so good. Mm -hmm. Like they're just a joy to watch. So you know they could take the most mundane. They could be reading the phone book to each other, and I think I would would enjoy this cast performing. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, I think it was good. To, it was it was a good. Uh, it was interesting to see Spock, you know, being human. Yeah, um, I so much of what you guys have said, like like the cast, the the comedic moments that they gave us, like like all of Pike's reaction shots, what the Sam Kirk guy did when he like his reaction to Spock freaking out like that was just like gold. It was so good. Um, I really loved the performances of her parents, like they. Uh, just, you know, the working off each other, her father was a delight. Um, and yeah, like I, I buy it. Like it's, it's a classic Star Trek, you know, just sciencey enough conundrum with, you know, a, a solution that requires some kind of, you know, isn't, it's not just a quick fix. Like it, like, like, like it actually required chapel to, you know, re put her life at risk and deal with an alien that doesn't entirely understand what she's talking about and admit some things that she wasn't necessarily ready to admit. Um, and I really appreciated um, that this 
episode gave us a little bit more of her too, because she's great. Yeah, I, I think that the um, the episode was such a great showcase for Ethan Peck, because Spock is a character that's hard to play, but also he's very flat. So being good Vulcan basically requires being very monotone, you know, and it's it's not necessarily uh, going to uh, showcase your acting range. But now that Ethan Peck had a chance to play a different kind of Spock, I realized he was funny, he had, a, he had all this energy, and I could sort of see more of, of uh, sort of Ethan Peck coming through. And I thought that was fantastic. And he was really funny. Uh, and I think, I don't, I don't know who mentioned this already. I think maybe it was Jenny, but you know, there isn't a lot of territory necessarily to mine with Spock, but there was, uh, you know, they gave us something new and fresh and that was really exciting. And, um, you know, I just, I thought, I, I think that kind of Strange New World is really hitting its stride with this episode and last episode where I realized, oh, I think what their thing is, is if they don't try to do Star Trek, but they do, they do something based on Star Trek and do their own thing. Because I think by the time you got to Star Trek Enterprise, I felt like Star Trek Enterprise was trying to do Star Trek so much that it was kind of like felt really tight and not really having a good time and having fun. And at least in these episodes and the, some of the episodes in the last season where they were, you know, with the pirates and, and whatnot, like we're just having a good time. And we just, you know, I think that's better than, you know, the stuff I've been seeing on Discovery, basically. This uh, week, we're, we're coming back to a, the love triangle between Spock, the Pring, and Chapel. Um, so how do we feel about that? How do we feel about the love triangle being back? Let's start with Jenny. I, it's funny because, because I've, I, you know, I, I like the chemistry between both sets of, you know, both parts of the triangle. Like, like, I think, I think they both have a really good, good chemistry together. Um, like Spock and T'Pring is wonderful and Spock and Chapel, it's like all sparks and, you know, Ugh, tension and and uh, sorry, I didn't actually make me to make a noise there. Who? <laughs> 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 um, and <laughs> I liked that this episode gave us a bit more of um, kind of a little bit more of an organic reason to move that relationship with him and Chapel forward a bit. Um, it didn't feel it didn't feel forced. I was actually I knew this was going to be a, an episode like that, and I was a little bit worried about it being too just like they're going to get to. But it really made sense the way that the way that it happened, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 on board. Oh, absolutely. I I don't really have too much to add to that. I thought uh, the, the thing about Strange New Worlds I think that I like the most is that. Um, I'm really engaging with the characters. I mean, I did watch all of Discovery, but really beyond, you know, Burnham, there were a lot of characters I was just kind of blah on. I never really felt like I was loving them, you know, and, and really feeling for them the way that I'm starting to feel, really feel for the characters here. So, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, we've spent enough time with them now that they, I think they can get away with some of these sort of, you know, these bigger swings with some of these characters because we're, we are we are willing to go to these places with them, uh, and yeah, and I, I thought uh, yeah, I was I was with it all. I, I think it's I think it's a a, a little bit of a romantic intrigue is is also a part of Trek, but it's been it's being done really well here, and you know of course informed in a way that is just delightful for longtime Trek fans. It's like oh yeah, we've we've certainly seen moments of this in the past. But it feels fresh and progressive nonetheless. So, yeah, I think they're doing a great job. Yeah, well, I think Namir and I have both been the past, like, that we're not fans of this love triangle. And it was probably one of my weakest parts of the of the first <laughs> season. But, you know, no offense to Namir, I, I, I bought it in this one. Like, I was, I was on board with the love triangle. Like... Everybody was coming from from a you know valid perspective. I I felt bad for everybody involved because I'm like there's so mm -hmm. there's so much you know emotions going on. I mean even with the Vulcans, like Tapring you know feels like she's she's been left out in the cold by by her fiance and Spock is very conflicted and and Chapel you know has this unrequited love and and. 
you know, it, I, I was into it this time. So you know, I'm, I'm I'm warming up to it, and the more I've been I've been watching some some original series now with re- going back to that with some episodes with, where Chapel, you know, I didn't realize how much that was kind of established in the original show, how how mm. much he was attracted to to Spock. I thought there was just that one episode, well, the muck time when when she brings him the soup and he throws it out, but there's that there's actually a few other moments too where where she's you know clearly clearly has feelings for Spock, you know beyond just the uh, you know a, a work colleague or friend mm-hmm. so you know i guess i thought they were kind of like forcing this on us but i guess it was already there so you know i'm i'm yeah i, I i'm yeah I'm more on board with it yeah now. <laughs> yeah and i think going through and seeing some of the original series noticing not just that chapel is in love with spock but the spock has feelings for chapel that he can't quite reciprocate. And I can't remember what episode it's in, um, but something Spock says that feels like to the effect of saying, you know, maybe I just can't talk about it, but there's, maybe there's something there, you know? And even the, the softening of, of his relationship to her, um, like in a, a mock time where he got, he got mad at her for bringing the soup. And then later on, he was like, Oh, will you bring me some of that soup? You know, that kind of thing, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I love the love triangle. I always love love triangles. So, and I agree with Jenny that there's always a, uh, there's good chemistry on the Pring side and good chemistry on the chapel side. I think if there wasn't good chemistry on both sides, there wouldn't be much tension. You know, it's always like, Ooh, what's going to happen? What's, ooh. you know, it's a little bit of, uh, I think I always like, uh, uh, you know, love triangles. I'm, I'm a sucker for, for romance, but I'm also a sucker for like suspense. Like what's going to happen? Who's, and I think that was the only thing that I found a little disappointing about the, about the, uh, end of the, the episode is that they're like, it looks like it's getting consummated. It looks like it's, uh, you know, rockets on the, uh, on the, <laughs> ready to blast off on, the, on that side of the relationship. And I, I was like, oh, really? I thought they were going to do a thing where he was he was about, kind of like what they did, where he was about to say something and then she, like, you know, shot him with some Vulcanness or something. And he, he just turned back into a Vulcan. And I, I thought that if he would, if he would, you know, if that would have made him go, like, oh, that's not, you know, I, I accept that you have feelings, but it's not how I feel or something like, or something like just to close it off and that it wouldn't quite get consummated. But, you know, the, the love triangle is kind of over now. Like the party's over. Ah, I don't know. I think I actually, I actually didn't, I didn't have a problem with it ending like that because, you know, we, we go forward to, to, to TOS and he's, he's messed up both of these relationships somehow. And I feel like this has just, instead of sort of, ending that part of the the triangle with chapel i feel like it's raised the stakes you know like what's gonna happen now that's gonna screw this up because something is something is gonna get in the way and make it so that they're like later on yeah i'm not sure if they're if if it's really gonna tie in oh cyborg yeah i can't wait for cyborg you know, I don't know if it's going to actually tie in with TOS. I feel like we're firmly in reboot territory. And, yeah, I don't know if it's going to all full circle on us or not. Mm, I think. That's interesting. I don't know. I don't know, Lucas. I, I, I mean, I'm, I was just thinking how, I mean, I'm really loving the sort of anthology vibe of it rather than the mythology vibe, right? Like, I mean, I know that somewhere behind all this, Pike knows when he's going to expire right and that's like the the hard heavy s- core of the ongoing arc but they haven't addressed it at all this season and i'm totally okay with it i'm like let's let's just keep on going the way we are cuz i'm having a lot of fun uh with the like self-contained shifting the tone between episode and episode um i think basically what i guess what i'm saying is i'm agreeing with you that we might be in reboot territory and somehow you know, we're going into a different, a, like another parallel universe to the uh, the original Trek. Yeah, I mean, I I, I really I, I love the show because of the same reason. I think it's uh, delightful. 
Um, I, you know, the, one of the things that I thought was delightful was all the stuff in the, uh, with the parents. And particularly where, where the husband and the husband's like, oh, I would like to have a little bit of that. And, and then uh, the wife would be like, She's oh, like, <laughs> it's too salty. And then he'd put it back. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was definitely wearing the pants. <laughs> <laughs> so. You're right. I don't like that. Yeah. And it's funny because it's something we've seen like kind of like a lot of times, like um, Ellen, you were saying, you know, it's kind of a sitcom cliche. But somehow with Vulcans, it kind of adds a whole new like layer of freshness. It's like it's the same thing, but with Vulcans, it's so much better. How did we feel about the uh, interdimensional beings uh, and, and sort of the, the presentation of them, the concept of them? Um, and I'm always a little confused as where they were, like they were on a, in a little portal that was around a moon of Vulcan. I didn't get that part. And but and then they went through the wormhole, which kind of reminded me of Deep Space Nine. Well, I gotta say the presentation of them reminded me again of classic Trek. Like you got an alien species, they speak o- with voiceover. They're very formal uh, and have certain rules of conversation and uh, and connection and communication. Uh, but they're you know in terms of physicality, they are very sort of psychedelic and dreamy. I, yeah, I love that. I, I'm all for that kind of alien species, the, the kind that we can't quite get our heads around, um, that don't entirely make sense. I know that they're created with this, like, they have this this incredible uh, technology on set when they make these uh, shows in Toronto. They have the volume, which is this this unbelievable wall where you can where they can create full environments, and I think they're using that to create some of these alien species, but it's so cool. I, I, uh, I, both in how it feels like fresh and a little different, but also how it's a bit of a callback to aliens of the past. So yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah. The, um, I actually listened to, uh, an, an, an interview with the director today. Um, and she did, she used an AR wall for the, the space. They had a mirrored floor. So it basically was just sort of creating the, the whole thing and then the the sparkly folks were uh like like cg'd in but but yeah like 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 they've they've done such a good job at kind of re recreating that 60s vibe without it being like hokey you know they've they've i just just and and i feel like they're even as we're moving forward in this show i feel like we're seeing more and more of it i feel like they're really getting comfortable creating that kind of energy the 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 props that they're using the just it's yeah it's pretty cool i mean was it the yeah yeah in the last episode having that you know blue pink gradation in the sky on the on rigel seven like that was just very just yeah it's great like they're really they're really kind of nailing it i think they're knocking it out of the park (laughs) yes yeah, the AR wall has been great for creating these these uh, these virtual environments, you know, where we're seeing things you wouldn't mm. see traditionally in Trek. Like, it, you know, it doesn't feel like we're on a soundstage anymore. You know, it, it feels yeah. like it feels like we have actual strange new worlds, you know, because that's what I thought with this one, too, when Chapel's in the thing. I'm like, oh, the, you know, this is living up to its title. Like, we're in a strange new world. I know, again, Namir, to, to bring in his... his uh, spirit back into their conversations always been like there's not enough strange new worlds in the strange new world show <laughs> so, and and uh, i felt like this one was very was very cool and and i like the aliens they had a very um uh, wormhole aliens from d space nine where they're kind of like don't really get our <laughs> our yeah. existence and they're kind of trying to bend their mind around it and uh yeah i thought that was interesting you know how how they got spock to, to turn into human because basically I guess they must have showed up in their domain as a messed up pile of atoms or <laughs> genetic material or whatever and I guess they, they assumed he, there was something wrong with him because he wasn't the same as the other being in the shuttle which would and be he had cha- parts from Chapel is human mm-hmm. it's like oh we have one human and then we have one that's kind of human but there's something else wrong with it <laughs> like we'll just fiddle with this and make it like the other one and it was I thought that was cool so and then they spit out spit out human Spock. So that was. I, I feel like it would it would made more sense yeah. if that was really the problem that that Spock would end up as a human woman. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like it's like oh yeah, they don't have matching parts either. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> that actually would have been that would have been pretty good. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. Oh, well, other level. <laughs> As if the, the episode wasn't funny enough, it would be funny. Yeah. I, just, I, I just noticed that, that there's another similarity between this and uh, Paul, Paul Mark in all the wrong places. Is that there's there's this whole um, love triangle in the in the episode. There were there were two love triangles because there was the love triangle between Grilka and well, it was really like a four way thing. When, with uh, Dax, Worf, Grilka, oh, love and Quark, <laughs> and then and then and then on the other side, it was Keiko, O'Brien, and uh, and Kira. Oh, right. Yeah, mm. but that that was a love triangle I was thinking about. It was the, the Keiko mm. O'Brien. Uh, it was it was very similar, and, 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 and the hijinks was on the Quark side, and the yeah. love triangle was on the Kira and O'Brien side. By the way, that's one of my. Top ten favorite episodes of Deep Space Nine ever. Nice. Yeah, and I don't know if this one will will be one of my top uh, Stranger Worlds, but it's pretty, it's pretty good. Do you guys ever look ahead to see what the titles of the upcoming episodes are? I, I yes, am a, although I am I a spoiler hound. This series, I, yeah. I did. Yeah, <laughs> I did with Picard. I did with Picard. Like every week, I was like, oh, what's well. The- well, I, I brought I bring it up because my good friend Bruce Russell, hey Bruce, if you're watching this, uh, he is the most hardcore Trek fan I know. He lives in Toronto, um, and incidentally, as a former Toronto uh, uh, resident, I was so thrilled by the Toronto episode. I was just thought that was just such a treat, such a treat. Um, and I, I used to brunch <laughs> at the Lakeview Lunch. It was my favorite brunch place at the corner of Dundas and Ossington. Right? Yes. So to see that again in the episode was just such a thrill. Anyway, I'm getting off the topic. Um, no, you're not. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> um, okay, we do all time. So, yeah, so episode <laughs> titles ahead, uh, according, Bruce looked them up and messaged me. Uh, episode seven is probably going to be the Lower Decks crossover. It's called Those Old Scientists. Uh, however, Rebecca Romaine and Anton Mount both said on a panel that episode eight is their favorite of the season, and the title suggests something dark and maybe DS9 related called Under the Cloak of War. Uh, but episode nine is entitled Subspace Rhapsody, which potentially could be another musical episode. Mm, you know, something like The Elysian one. Kingdom, says Bruce. So oh, dear. anyway, <laughs> I, I'm excited by all of it. I think halfway through this uh-huh. season, I am just, uh, I'm loving it. I'm totally loving it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited, and I feel like it's you know the fact that they're they're really there's no point in doing new Star Trek if you're not going to do something new, and I think they're finding their niche and bring new things and just kind of going crazy like this is the sitcom episode, and and then last year you had the pirate episode, and then we're gonna have a musical and then we're gonna have a, like an animation crossover which reminds me of The Simpsons, Alan, where where Homer <laughs> goes into the three dimensional. Right. Oh my god, right. Oh my god. Oh man, I forgot about you, that. You you saw a Simpsons episode and you made a reference to it. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> All of our Simpsons references in the mirror and I just go over oh. right over Lucas's head. I don't know how you can be in your forties and not know Simpsons with like the back of your hand, but okay. <laughs> it's been like the first ten years worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean the rest of it, yeah, you can forgive not knowing that, but you gotta know the first the first ten or twelve years. I think it's a prerequisite for being, you know, <laughs> for a, being North, a, a North American yeah. in your 40s. And, and nerdy. I mean, it is the nerdiest prime, you know. I, I'm going to go along with Alan on this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well said. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, you guys were talking about the AR wall, and I have it, uh, I've heard through the grapevine that the uh, – D- Discovery crew, like the the film crew, mm. refer to the AR the volume as the holodeck. Ah, nice. Yeah, we're gonna I go film that. the holodeck today. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's awesome. This is really exciting. Um, I loved Picard, and again, these are different shows, but I loved Picard for a whole bunch of reasons. One of which was because it was like getting together with my old friends. Um. But that also really raised the stakes for me. And I'm finding watching Strange New Worlds, it really, I'm just sitting back and I'm really just able to just like, just, it's so fun. Like I'm just having a really fun time 
you know, I, I don't have 30 years of emotional investment in these particular characters. So I, you know, I'm getting to know them. It's, yeah, it's just great. And I'm enjoying the actors so much. Yeah. yeah, it's like a it's like a light meal. It's like a little yeah. salad that you're not gonna feel <laughs> good. Yeah, I'm so tired. The food, the food, <laughs> yeah. the food it's either baseball or food here, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, let, let's do our little. But that's right. What do you think? We're gonna do our little wrap up of uh, our final thoughts and what our rating is out of ten. Uh, let's start with Carson. I mean, uh, you know, for comedic episodes, this is just like chef's kiss. I, I don't think I could have asked for much more. I'm happy to give it a nine just because like maybe, uh, maybe it has like, you know, maybe it'll, maybe it's a classic and I haven't realized yet, but I think for now I'm quite happy to give it a nine. Uh, yeah. Again, I, uh, I think this, this one gets high marks. I, I mean, we didn't really talk about the wrap up too much, but I, you know, my heart broke a little for chapel in that moment where Spock's going to profess his love to her and he, she just jabs them as like, I need you, you know, to be you. You know, I can't, I can't let you be something you aren't just to make me happy or whatever. So you know that it it went from very, very comedic, you know, and a good time, and and then it got this kind of heart wrenching. It's like, oh, it's like, it's like it was almost there, and you know, she had to make the tough call to just like, just basically rip the band aid off, and you know, by jabbing him with his. His uh, space gene goo or whatever Vulcan goo, <laughs> and uh, you know, put him back back the way he was. His Vulcan so, mojo. His yeah, Vulcan yeah, mojo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was kind of a bit of a gut punch after so many laughs with this episode, and you know, and I always like that. I, I I do like a good roller coaster of emotion, so you know, I'm gonna give this one an eight, eight out of ten. So I think you know, it was really really good, and uh, yeah. I'd, for all the aforementioned reasons. So I, yeah, like I loved the the comedy of the, ep- the the episode. I thought it was great, based on my extremely skewed to the top rating system. Um, <laughs> I I, uh, I would go with a nine, except that this episode also included Amanda Grayson, and number one, the actress that they've chosen to play her is so good she's just so warm she's so like she just you believe that she's just spent the last you know however many years with Vulcans like it's it's and the deep dive into Spock as it relates to her I thought was such a great angle on his character and her character and the the ending with with him and her and her and, and him realizing really what she's been through um to support him all these years i thought was like that i gave this episode a 10 because i just that that put it over the edge for me mm-hmm. we had a 10 we had a, like a bingo wow. yeah perfect bingo <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go. I, I I didn't mention that either. But that scene where he he rips his fake Vulcan ears off to to reveal it's like, oh, you you've been thinking I'm a Vulcan this whole time, but you're dealing with a human. I was like, that was a good when, when he basically took that that mother in law down a peg. It was like that was that was a nice moment too. Yeah, I really like this episode. I, I think I would I, any episode that can make me laugh, actually like LOL laugh, then it's an automatic eight. Um, and there were a couple of weird things in the episode that don't make it like a nine or a 10. And it's those contrivances of why doesn't Spock just tell to Pring? Oh, because she had a hard day and I doesn't want to tell her, but it's just an excuse so that we have all this sitcom tension or why doesn't, if they know that the way to save Spock is to go into the wormhole and talk to the interdimensional aliens, why don't they like check in with, with Pike and say, you know, they just, they're all in Starfleet. They all have to follow rules. They're all like in the military and they're always going like, let's just go on one mission and not tell the boss. And you're like, it's not how it works. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be immediately fired <laughs> from Starfleet. Uh, but you know, it, you know, it adds dramatic tension. And you know, so those kinds of things are like, wow, ah, okay. And so it doesn't get like a, like a nine or a 10, but you know, it's a solid eight. And it's definitely one of my favorite episodes uh, in general, but of this season. 
I love that moment too, where where they're all bickering, and Pike yes. comes in with his hors d'oeuvres, and he's like, do do do. Okay. <laughs> that, oh he played God. that moment so well, and like it reminded me of last season when he does his pirate impression, impersonation, oh and I'm like, he just has such good good comic instincts, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I love it. I love Anson Mack. Yeah, it's like they, they really they really struck gold getting him as the as their leading man. I think. Okay, we'll be back next week to review the <laughs> Ghost Uhura episode. If you like what you see, please subscribe, like, and we'll see you again next week.